Growing the right variety of vegetable can be the difference between success and failure, between satisfaction and dissatisfaction in terms of your crop and how you enjoy it at the end of the season. So it's always really good to look and make sure that you're making a good choice and the right choice when you're choosing the variety to grow. Now I wanted to actually take you through a few of the things that I've grown this year, the ones that I've found to be really good and why I think they're good. Now when you're actually choosing a variety, you're going to be looking at four primary factors that cover pretty much any vegetable, but also there's going to be other factors that you need to look at depending on what it is that you're evaluating. Those four primary factors are climate, does the vegetable that you're choosing suit your climate? D does the variety suit the climate specifically? Uh, the example I would give there is say here in Tasmania where we have a short growing season, you wouldn't want to choose pumpkins for example that take a long growing season. They need to be short growing season pumpkins. The second element to evaluate is the disease resistance of the variety. Having a variety that has poor disease resistance can really lead to some dissatisfaction. I know one year I grew some bush beans that were overtaken with mildew very quickly because I found that that variety was highly susceptible to mildew. And so while it looked like there was going to be a lovely crop, it was all lost very quickly. So disease resistance is an important thing to look for. The third element is the actual productivity and the yield. Is the vegetable you're choosing going to give a good yield or is it going to be a little bit poor? Look, some of the heritage species don't always yield very well, but others do. So it's just a matter of evaluating them for your area and you might have to grow a plant for a few seasons before you can really make a clear judgment. The fourth and probably the most important element I think in choosing the variety is taste. Do you actually enjoy the taste? Does it give you the taste that you're looking for? And the flavour that you're after? So again, you're going to have to grow it to actually establish that. Now, the first example I'd like to give you is this bean. Now, in the past I had generally grown bush beans. The reason being that when I had tried climbing beans, I was always dissatisfied with flavour. One of the most common climbing beans grown in this part of the world are scarlet runners and scarlet runners have a very distinctive flavour which is okay but I always thought the bush bean flavour was better and so I stuck to that. I came across this particular variety by accident. I had ordered Blue Lake bush bean and when I planted it, I found that it was actually a climbing bean. They had mixed up the seed and it began to grow. So my belief is that it is Blue Lake, but a climbing version of it. Why I really like it is that the flavour is pretty much the same as a bush bean. It's a really nice bean. Um, crisp, no strings and... The other factor that I find really good is that the actual harvest window is quite good. And when I, what I'm talking about is between when it is young and juicy and as it's getting older, you might say, oh, it's still you know, a few more days. That still is nice and crisp and edible. So you've got quite a few days that you can actually leave it between picks without losing crop. A climbing bean I, really is so superior over a bush bean because you can just pick it standing up, none of this bending over and looking for beans. Uh, and save so much space in your garden. It crops over a good long period, so even now at the end of the season it is still trying to flower and produce more. For me, this Blue Lake climber is the best choice. I've been growing it now for a few years and I will stay with that. So at the end of the season I start to leave, you'll see some bigger ones in here. 
that I'm leaving because I want them to give seed for the next year. So that's just one example of choosing a variety that actually works here and works well. Now here in the greenhouse there's a couple of other examples of what I think are good variety choices. These I've only actually grown for the first season so it is early and I still do need to evaluate them over further seasons but in this one season the, both these varieties have really convinced me that they're ones that I want to grow again. The first is this tomato and you'll see just how massive it's grown on the straw bales and it has beautiful trusses of tomatoes. They are a little egg shaped tomato. The variety is called Gardener's Delight. It's well known in other parts of the world but not so common here in Tasmania. Look comparing this to traditional cherry tomatoes I find this a much nicer tomato. Uh, it's very soft it wouldn't be a good commercial tomato but very tasty, soft, easy eating. It's one of those sort of things that once you've actually tasted one you'd really want more and the crop is fantastic it's just producing heaps and heaps so it's something I'm going to be growing again I haven't tried it outside to see what it's like in the outdoor environment but in here it's absolutely thrived and fantastic production there has been a bit of white fly in it this year I probably need to grow a bit more basil around but white fly of course is a bit of a problem that you do get in the stagnant air uh, in a greenhouse. Now the third one is growing amongst this and it's the end of the season now so all I have are the ones that I've grown for seed is this cucumber. Now early in the season they were a long green cucumber and we were picking them they are really really crisp juicy cucumber and sweet the variety is called Muncher uh, it's a Lebanese style cucumber but a little bit different to the traditional Lebanese. Look we picked lots and lots of these off the vine and they were delicious and not a single one of them showed any sign of bitterness they were all lovely and sweet so a cucumber that I want to grow again and I'll be keeping this seed to actually ensure that I can keep this cucumber growing. The fourth and final variety that I want to talk about this year is this pumpkin, small sugar, which is the first time again that I've grown this. And on two counts it has really shown itself to be a good pumpkin. The first being it has produced really well. The second that is actually produced nicely in the short season that we've had. So look it's nice and compact in its growing time and that it's produced really well in the season and we've already started eating some so it suits the short season really really well however we still really have to evaluate it on two further counts one being flavor uh, the early taste is not always accurate and so as they mature over time we might get a more accurate taste of whether we like this flavor and the important thing with pumpkins is does it keep and that is something that we really still have to evaluate so it's going to be over a few months where we can make that judgment so varieties look grow them try experiment with different ones and make your evaluations to see if they suit your local area because there is huge difference between one area and another into what variety you should be growing